Hello friends, welcome back to lecture 6 in the Stroke Imaging series. In this lecture, we shall discuss about penumbra. Let me outline what I am going to discuss in today's lecture. What is a penumbra? And how to differentiate penumbra from infarct based on pathophysiology? And finally, how can you identify penumbra in images? So first and foremost question, why do you need penumbra? If only penumbra is there in the imaging, can you reassure that if you are giving reperfusion, it may bring out significant impact in the outcome of the patient. Okay. So let's take a scenario when a particular blood vessel is blocked by a thrombus. That is known as an ischemic stroke. It can be due to thrombus or it can be due to emboli. Now what will happen to brain in such a scenario? So, the area number 1 marked is the normal brain. Here, consider this is the particular vessel supplying the normal brain. That is normal. Now, take another vessel supplying the area marked in grey. I am outlining it in a blue circle. So, this particular vessel is supplying the area marked in grey outlined by the blue circle. I have got a clot here occluding this vessel. So, this area of brain parenchyma is, is said to be hypoperfuse. Now, even within the hypoperfuse region, there is varying extent to which each of the tissue is perfused. Hence, we have brought out a concept called four compartment brain ischemia model. Let us see all the four compartments. So, when the blood vessel is blocked by a thrombus, what is happening? You are getting hypoperfusion. What do you mean by hyperperfusion? The incoming blood flow is re reduced. It is otherwise known as cerebral blood flow. CBF is reduced. So you get an area of hyperperfusion. Now when the cerebral blood flow is reduced, the amount of blood reaching a particular tissue, say this one, okay? What is the amount of blood reaching there? That is known as a cerebral blood volume. That will also be affected but to varying extent. Depending on that, we have got four zones, okay? Let's take zone number one. Zone number one is which one? The area marked in white, this area. What is it? It is a normal brain parenchyma because the blood supply to this area is not affected. Whereas the blood supply to this particular area, gray area is affected. So one is a normal zone. So what is the normal blood flow there? So it is different for gray matter and it is different for white matter. So we know that which, which area is more affected, the cortex, the gray matter is more affected when you get a clot in the vessel. Why? Because that is having higher metabolic rate. So gray matter, the normal blood flow is in the range of 50 to 60 ml per 100 gram per minute. It is much lesser in the white matter. So for all, all practical purpose, we shall just remember this value. So region 1 is having the normal blood flow, cerebral blood flow in the range of 50 to 60 ml per 100 gram per minute. Now we are going to the hyperperfuse zone. That is the zone supplied by this particular, this particular vessel occluded by the clot outlined in the white. Okay, this area, gray area. That is the hyperperfused zone. So even within the hyperperfused zone, there is various extent to which each tissue is affected. So let's take the outermost area of this hyperperfused zone. That is the zone number 2, area number 2. What is this region called? This region is called as the oligemic zone, oligemia or perfusion reserve zone. What do you call it? Perfusion reserve zone. So what is happening here? You have getting reduced blood flow. That is inevitable because the blood vessel is blocked. But what will the bra brain or the body try to do? The body has to ensure that the brain cells are getting sufficient oxygen. For that, what does the brain do? With the limited blood supply, it tries to increase the perfusion pressure. So there is an increase in the cerebral perfusion pressure. So with this modification, what will the cells in the zone 1 do? They will try to increase the oxygen extraction. Such a way that their metabolism is intact. Metabolism is still functioning. So due to decreased cerebral blood flow, this region is in the outermost zone. So what will it do? It tries to get collateral from periphery. It will try to get blood supply from periphery. And for this zone too, it is easier because it is close to the healthy parenchyma, brain parenchyma. And with all the compensatory mechanism, there is increase in the cerebral perfusion pressure. And as a 
result the cells are able to increase the oxygen extraction and maintain their metabolism so oligemic area even though it is coming under the hypoperfuse zone is relatively normal metabolically and functionally and even if you are not going to support this area by giving reperfusion therapy this area will survive so we are not worried about oligemia because it can take care of itself okay now we are going further deep into the hyperperfusion zone that is we have done with two that is the oligemic zone it can take care of itself even without we providing an external support now let's take the zone 3 what is the zone 3 the zone 3 is our area of interest which is the penumbra so what is happening here definitely the blood vessel is blocked by a clot so this is a, there is hyperperfusion that is there is de decrease in the cerebral blood flow now the body is trying to increase the cerebral perfusion pressure by trying to bring out the collateral from uh, surrounding normal areas but there is a problem zone 3 is further deeper within the vessel that is the main source of supply to that area so is it an easy task for zone 3 no so what happens though the body is attempting to increase the cerebral perfusion pressure it is not sufficient so the cerebral perfusion pressure will be decreased in zone 3 but 2 was able to maintain it zone 2 was able to maintain it it was self-sufficient but here the perfusion pressure comes down so though the body is trying to increase oxygen extraction it does not meet the demand it is not meeting the demand so what will happen there is definitely metabolic abnormality in this area cells in this area are going to face metabolic abnormality it is not dead yet cytotoxic edema has not happened yet the sodium potassium bomb has not failed yet but is in the case of impending failure so that zone 3 is the zone of penumbra and that is our region of interest why if we give an external support give some blood supply try to reperfuse it it can come back to normal that is it can go shift to oligemic area and finally it can become normal if not what will it do if you're not providing support what will it do it will inevitably go to cytotoxic edema cell death and ultimately core infarct now coming to zone 4 that is the central portion that is the area which is bearing the brunt of occlusion of this vessel why that is the area that is maximum dependent on the vessel without this vessel blood flow no way out okay so this area the cerebral blood flow is decreased then what has happened perfusion pressure is not being maintained there is oxygen extraction is not maintaining the metabolism is coming down and finally it has actually undergone cell death or cytotoxic edema so zone 4 is the core infarct zone so our aim is to prevent the zone 3 from slipping into uh, zone 4 we don't want such a thing to happen okay that is that is the importance of penumbra so this is what is happening with time progression the cerebral blood flow is going further down initially in one and up to in two the cerebral perfusion pressure was being able to maintain further which there is drastic drop in cerebral perfusion pressure as a result oxygen and metabolic abnormalities will result oxygen extraction and thereby the metabolic abnormality will come into phase and you get final infarct zone so what do you mean by penumbra for that you should know what is umbra umbra means shadow okay shadow and this is the area and this area is the area of illumination so penumbra is somewhere in between the zone of shadow and zone of illumination you give some support and try to pull back it to the normal or else what it will do it will go to the death zone okay so to point to understand is penumbra is dynamic it is very dynamic what all factors will it depend on it depends on the survival of penumbra the how long it will last the extent of penumbra depends on number of factors the key factor is what the presence of collaterals ability to rapidly establish the collaterals and then what all the pcd the hematocrit hb value at the time of insult at the time of occlusion of the vessel how is the hb how is the blood glucose how is the bp so all these are factors determining what or how the uh, penumbra will evolve okay will it rapidly go into infarct will is there going to be a penumbra can the penumbra be salvaged okay all these factors are there so it is potentially recoverable so we have just seen what is penumbra and that 
our aim in imaging in ischemic stroke is not just to diagnose why not just to diagnose the infarct we have to see whether there is a penumbra because if penumbra is there our aim of thrombolysis reperfusion is to target the penumbra and save it so we have seen the physiology pathophysiology that is uh, happening behind penumbra but we need to know how can you diagnose or differentiate penumbra from infarct okay for that you need to be familiarized with certain terms like cbv cbf mtt and ttt don't worry we'll quickly go through that so this is a ct brain image and we know that whenever you're taking image ct or mri what are you having you're getting multiple voxels okay each voxel representing particular tissue okay now let us consider one such particular voxel okay we are going to consider one such voxel here this is a voxel of tissue brain tissue now what does a voxel have it has got a particular brain tissue now each voxel there is blood supply okay each area of brain tissue there is blood supply suppose this is the incoming blood artery to it and after the vessel is filling uh, the after the blood is filling the voxel the vessel has to the blood has to go out through the vein so you have got the artery and the vein okay artery and the vein here now the amount of blood that is coming into the voxel that is known as the rate at it which comes is known as cerebral blood flow cbf blood flow how do you measure it it you measure it in ml per gram of tissue per minute it's a flow dynamic thing now the blood vessels coming here 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 will fill up the voxel like this okay it is going to fill up the voxel like this so the amount of blood vessel blood volume the amount of blood that's going to fill the voxel is termed as cbv cerebral blood volume how will you measure it you will measure it in ml per 100 gram okay after filling it what the blood has to do the blood has to go out through the way so the time taken time taken between the inflow sorry between the inflow and outflow the duration that is termed as what that is termed as our mtt that is termed as mean transit time time taken for incoming blood and the blood to move out is known as mean, uh, mtt mean transit time and the time taken for the blood to reach the peak value that is called as the ttp time to t uh, peak so don't worry we'll just remember the cbf cbv and the mtt now what happens in case of infarct we can see case scenario one infarct so in fact let's take there is a brain tissue here a voxel containing brain tissue you have the blood flow in infarct was it what is happening the blood vessel is blocked so there is hypoperfusion hypoperfusion what do you mean by hypoperfusion there was decrease in the cerebral blood flow so there is decrease in the cerebral blood flow so when the blood flow is decreased blood is only moving slowly 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 so the amount of blood reaching here that will also be decreased that is also going to be decreased actually ideally you should get the blood filling the entire voxel but here the flow is slow there is no additional support and only a part of the voxel will get will get filled with blood that is cbv is less now what happens the blood after filling the voxel has to go out through the vein but what is happening there is delay in inflow and there is stasis in the in the voxel so much time is taking even to fill this much time duration taken to come and move out is also increased which means there is increase in the mean transit time so this is the definition of infarct there is a dig like at pathophysiological level molecular level there is decrease in the cerebral blood flow there is decrease in the cerebral blood volume and there is increase in the mean transit time these are the changes happening at the molecular level at infarct now let's take case scenario 2 again let's take a voxel of tissue that is surrounding the four infarcted zone that is in the penumbra region again the blood vessel is there coming and the vein going out is there so the blood what is penumbra it's an area that is also in the periphery of the core infarct where the parent vessel the vessel of interest has been blocked so there is hypoperfusion what do you mean by hypoperfusion there is decrease in the incoming blood so what do you get there is decrease in the cerebral blood flow now the blood vessels only few are there full rate is very slow and it's trying to fill up the voxel it is trying to fill it up 
it may not be as fast as the normal tissue but what are we having for the penumbra penumbra is trying to save itself from the parent vessel by re-establishing collateral trying to get vessel, blood supply from the collateral leptomeningeal collateral so with the input from the collateral vessels and also the input from the parent vessel or the main vessel of interest it is actually filling up the entire voxel so what is happening the cerebral blood flow sorry volume will be normal it will be normal why the parent the occluded vessel is only supplying little bit of blood but what is the penumbra doing the penumbra is getting collateral supply it is trying to establish collateral so through the collateral you are getting blood and together they will fill up the required voxel or the required brain tissue but what is the problem the time taken is, taken is long so what happens is the mean transit time time to come in and move out that is prolonged so there is increase in the there is increase in the mean transit time so what is the definition of penumbra how does it differ from the infarct zone definitely there is decrease in cerebral blood flow both cases what about cbv that is normal or maintained what happens to mpp that is prolonged so summarizing you have got infarct and you have got penumbra looking at the parameters cerebral blood flow cerebral blood volume and mtp so inflow high both are hyperperfuse region so inflow is low in both what happens to cerebral blood volume you're not getting any supply to the voxel to the dead tissue so cerebral blood flow is low in infarct what happens in penumbra it is normal or it is maintained what happens in the mean transit time that is again increased increased in both okay so the only difference between penumbra and infarct is in the terms of what the cerebral blood flow so sorry cerebral blood volume so you should know that cerebral blood volume is a rough correlate of core infarct okay corresponding somewhat corresponding to the diffusion rated imaging that we see in infarct the diffusion restriction cytotoxic edema cell death failure of sodium potassium pump okay cerebral blood volume and the difference between cerebral blood flow and cerebral blood volume is a correlate of what is a correlate of our penumbra the difference between volume and flow is a correlate of penumbra keep this point in mind because based on this you are going to interpret the imaging findings in penumbra now coming to imaging of penumbra what are the techniques that we have at our hand we have got something on perfusion imaging the perfusion imaging and also mri okay perfusion imaging with ct at the same time you can do perfusion imaging with mri so in case of acute infarct you have proceeded with ct followed by ct angiogram or cct and then you are going to develop perfusion map based on ct you get ct perfusion Whereas if you're going straight away to MRI, you can do processing in MRI also, acquire MRI perfusion mapping too. Okay, the interpretation is slightly different. We shall see them one by one. So how do you get CT perfusion map? First, you're going to take plain CT, plain CT of head. Then after that, what you're going to give? You're going to give intravenous contrast. And when you're giving contrast, what you're going to do? You're going to image very rapidly, obtain dynamic sequence every one second like that for 30 seconds. Continuously so that you are able to track the passage of intravenous contrast as it passes from the artery to the brain parenchyma to the vein. So you are getting multiple sequences so that you are not missing any step. You are going through the milestones along with artery as it goes through the artery, brain parenchyma and finally exits the brain parenchyma through vein. And then you are doing lots and lots of computer processing and you are going to get color coded maps like this. Okay, what are the important maps that you're going to get? You're going to, you're going to be interested in three important maps. CBF map, flow map, volume map and MTP map. All are color coded. So just a word to identify. So look at the scale here. The color coded map has been provided with the scale for us to understand. So everything is graded from low to high. You get blue to red. So red depicts a larger magnitude, value, measurable term. The cerebral blood flow, as I said, for all practical purpose, we shall just remember the flow of gray matter or the cotton. So for the normal brain parenchyma, it's roughly in the range of 50 to 60, right? ML per 100 gram per minute. So this is up to scale of 100. 100. Where does 50 come? 50 comes somewhere in the green. 
So 50 to 60 greenish to yellow. So that's what you're seeing. Look at the cortex. Bilaterally it's symmetrical. Only in the expected region of blood vessel you are getting very high flow near 100. Okay. So the, the cerebr see the sub sagittal sinus here, the branches of vessels here, those are only depicted in red. Rest are in the terms of in the cortex, it is in the terms of blue to green that is that is roughly corresponding to 50 to 60 that's how you interpret so this is in the scale of 100 so this is cbf now look at cerebral blood volume so what is the normal blood volume to the gray matter it is in the range of 4 ml okay 4 ml per 100 gram per sorry 4 ml per 100 gram okay it is in the range of 4 ml so that is why look at the scale here the maximum available value is 10 so uh, half of 10 5 comes somewhere in the uh, sorry in the green area so, 4 is slightly less. So, greenish to bluish. Again, bilateral cortex, you can see greenish to bluish. This is normal. Now, let us take it MTT value, the transit time. Time taken for inflow, time taken to go out. That duration. So, it is in the scale given as 16. So, normal value is around 4 minute for the gray matter or the cortex. So, 4, 16 half of 16 is 8. So, somewhere in the green. So, it has to be further down in the region of blue. That is why you see everything in the blue. Okay. This is the normal appearance. Now, let us now let's see the perfusion map by analyze them using cases. Okay. Case 1. This is a 51 year old man CT head which uh, who has presented with acute onset right side of weakness and aphasia. So, it is an acute event. So, you are thinking of a acute onset weakness vascular. You are having differentials of vascular neoplastic versus demyelination clinically. But it is an acute onset. So, you are thinking in terms of vascular event. You took a CT brain. Is it in the normal window? No, this is the stroke window setting. 32 HU, 8 HU. Okay. Window uh, width and window level. That is what I am looking at to depict early changes. Okay. What we have summarized in the, what you have discussed in lecture 1. We are looking for that. I am going over to the CT perfusion map. So, I have been provided with CB flow, cerebral bed volume and MTT map. Now, what do I see here? Okay. Before, just look at it. As I said before, any part of the body you have got symmetry compare right and left side right cerebral hemisphere versus left cerebral hemisphere is it comparable no one side is red the other side is blue so we should know which is the bad one so flow flow it should be in the higher range so 60 it should be somewhere over here on the right side it is normal on the left side it is further going down to the blue area that is it is reduced cerebral blood flow is reduced your inference is that cbf is reduced it is bluish here blue comes to the lower value towards zero right so, you have got low value here. Now, coming to CBV value, okay, cerebral blood volume. Now, at one look, I am comparing, I do not see any abnormality. Both sides are symmetrical. So, I am taking a closer look, yes, symmetry maintained, symmetry maintained, yes, it is maintained. So, it means that, and let me cross check with the approximate value I know, 4. 4 means 10, uh, half of 10 is 5, just below that 5 and 4, it comes green. So, greenish area, it is fine, it looks normal. So, my inference is that cerebral blood volume is normal. Now, let me move over to the MTT map. What do I see in MTT map? Definitely right and left there is difference. On the left side I am seeing increased redness. Okay. Redness means what? High value. Whatever be the color coded mark, red is high value. So, red high, time is high. Time is high means increased. That is not what we want. We want minimum time. Right. Minimum time is normal. So, blue color in MTT is actually normal. Why? Time should be kept bare minimum. Time increase means there is a sluggish flow in Lot of time is taking to fill and lot of time it is taking to out. So, that is abnormal. So, reddish area is abnormal. So, definitely this is not a normal tissue because I have got abnormality in the CBF. I have got abnormality in the MTT but I have got a normal CBV. So, what does it mean? This is a case of penumbra. Entire area that you see is penumbra without actually any infarct. I am not seeing any infarct here. So, penumbra in CT perfusion map, what should you look for? You should look for the mismatch between cerebral blood flow and cerebral blood volume. There is a clear mismatch. Flow is reduced in a great, uh, great area over a great span like this. But what about the um, CBV? No change at all. Even if there is a change, you have to look for if there is a mismatch. That is what you have to look for. Even if CBV was small over here, this much area there is no change. Still that means this much area is area of penumbra. Okay, so that is what you have to look for. So, CT perfusion map, uh, map look for mismatch between flow map and volume map. Very, very important. That signifies penumbra. Let us take case 2. Again, another 61 year old man presenting with right side of acute weakness and aphasia. 
Now CT image, I've got a clear cut sign. What is it? Hyperacute infarct. What do I get? I do get hyperdense MCA sign. Okay, so I know it is infarct. Now what should I do? It is an early sign. I'm not seeing any parenchymal change. You can go for straight away reperfusion therapy. But I need to know whether there is penumbra actually. Because my aim is to treat the penumbra. Penumbra is if I give treatment, I'm going to get very good results. Okay. So for that, I'm going to acquire cerebral blood flow, cerebral blood volume and MTT map. Okay. I've not provided scale here. But we have already seen how to interpret that. So let's try to read that. Compare right and left to CB, uh, CBF map. What do you see? There is stark contrast. Left side is bluish. On the right side, it is okay. We know that the left side is abnormal based on CT because we got hyperdense MCA sign. So the left side, what do, I, what do I get? I get bluish area. Blue means what? Low value. Low value. Whatever be the map, CBV, F or uh, MTT, blue means low value, red means high value. So CBF, low. Flow, low means it's abnormal. So this area is abnormal. So I'm marking out the area here. Now I'm moving over to my CBV map. What do I see? Looking carefully, yes. Am, am I area seeing abnormal area? Yes. Compare the right and left lendiform nucleus. This is the region of lendiform nucleus. Okay. What do I see here? I see bluish area here. So CBV map. Blue means low value. Volume low. Volume low. That means pathological. So this is my area of pathology. Now I'm I'm going to MTT map. So this is enough. You can actually stop with here. But MTT map, I'm, for completion sake, I'm going to MTT map. What do I see? I see definitely abnormality or difference between right and left side. There is increased flow, red side, increased redness on the left hemisphere. What does redness means high value? For MTT high is abnormal, more time. So that is abnormal. Now what am I going to do? I have to compare my CBF and CBV. Definitely both images are showing abnormality. Is it matching? Area was no. Only a smaller area of CBV has been included whereas for the CBF there is a large area. CBF is more than CBV which means that this marked out area which roughly corresponds to this marked out area in yellow is the region of your core infarct whereas the surrounding region that you see change in the CBF without change in the CBV is your penumbra. So, what do you get? Penumbra, there is a mismatch. Only this is the region of core infarct. Only this is because this is the only area that is matching in both images. Whereas, rest of the area, rest of the area, there is change only in the CBF. No change in the, no change in the CBV. So, this area here, that is my penumbra. That is what I am going to treat. So, now let us move over to MR perfusion map. Compare the MR perfusion map. So MRI, you're going to get the normal sequences, diffusion flare, T2, etc., and finally going to get perfusion imaging map. Now, what do I see in the diffusion? I see hyperintensity. Where I see in the lendi lendiform nucleus and the caudate uh, nucleus, head of the caudate. So this is hyperindense. I'm I have to correlate with ADC map, and I've correlated, and I call it diffusion restriction. Okay. So the, that is a case of acute infarct, correlating with a clinical feature, patient presenting with sudden onset weakness. Now I am going to look at the perfusion map. What do I see in the perfusion map? I am not provided this whether it is MTT or whether it is CBV or CBF. But from this I know that this is likely to be MTT, right? Overall the normal brain parenchyma it is having low value. MTT should be normally low, normally low, 4, four seconds. So uh, you have to actually get it low. And whereas I am seeing a higher region in the right side. Now, what am I going to look? I have to match the diffusion and perfusion map. I have to see whether it is matching. It is like playing a game, whether the areas do match. Actually, the area involved in diffusion weighted image in the form of diffusion restriction, bright area, is that abnormal in the perfusion map? Yes, it is greenish, yellowish with reddish over here. That is there. I, I can assure you that. But is that all? No, the neighboring area is also affected. Where this entire area, the MTT is prolonged. It is the MTT is prolonged in this entire area. So there is a mismatch. Diffusionally smaller area, perfusion larger area. So this mismatch between perfusion and diffusion weighted image, where you get larger abnormality in the perfusion, shows that that area is the penumbra. So, this diffusion restricting area here is your core infarct 
and this larger area that you get is the penumbra. So, you can go for revascularization. Our target is the penumbra. Okay. Let us see another case scenario diffusion weighted image. I am seeing hyper intensity. I have to correlate with ABC to call it diffusion restriction and I have co uh, correlated and I call it diffusion restriction. Now, this is the perfusion map. Perfusion map. So, more compare right and left side, what you see in cortex more of uh, greenish areas, green is green red area that means it is going towards higher. So, that is the normal area. So, this is likely to be my CBF or CBV map not MTT and I see what a black area low area here somewhere over here. So, that is the low CBV or CBF in this I have not provided which map it is but when you are actually looking at MRI you can know which is which map ok either by looking at the scale I am not provided scale here. So, I am getting two abnormalities and now what I have to check whether these areas do match or not. Yes, I do see that they match. Diffusion restricting area is equal to the abnormality in perfusion which means there is no penumbra. So, if you go actually revascularize this is not a potential case where you actually go for revascularization. Okay. Now, let us see one word about MRA whether the routine sequences will help in identifying the penumbra. So, take this case scenario this is our diffusion weighted imaging what do you see I see a hyper intensity in the periventricular region ok. Now, on the left side I have to correlate with ABC map to call it diffusion restriction consider it is done and this is diffusion restriction. Now, I am going to compare to the flare. Now, what do I see in flare in the brain parenchyma do I see a hyper intensity no. But what else do I see? I see that another sign that we have discussed previously. What is it? Hyper intense vessel sign actually over the entire cerebral parenchyma that is over a larger area here I am seeing hyper intense vessel sign. But the diffusion area is very low. So, what does a hyper intense vessel sign show? It shows that there is increased collateralization. So, you can take this as diffusion flare mismatch as a potential penumbra ok because we know that Diffusion weighted imaging to get abnormality you get take 20 minutes and flare imaging to get parenchymal abnormality minimum 6 hours ok. So, that parenchymal abnormality is not there. So, it is definitely less than 6 hours or some say it less than 4.5 hours. But what else do I know? I know that there is penumbra here because there is attempt of collateralization there is hyper intense vessel sign ok slow flow within the collateral. So, if you get such a diffusion weighted and perfusion uh, sorry diffusion weighted flare mismatch again you can call it penumbra. So, summarizing we have seen what all what is penumbra actually what is the basic pathophysiology behind that. Now, and next we have seen what how to image penumbra it is by doing either perfusion imaging which can be in the form of CT perfusion or MR perfusion. So, CT perfusion what are you going to look for in CT perfusion you are going to look for cerebral blood flow cerebral blood volume mismatch whereas in the MR perfusion imaging what are you going to look for? You are going to look for perfusion weighted and diffusion weighted mismatch such that there is larger abnormality in the perfusion weighted imaging. So, I hope it is clear. Thank you very much for listening to the class.